Good morning, people. Watch Women 65. Lisa Boyce here. I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Christ died for our past, present, and future sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day, according to Scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone. It is grace that God gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It is grace by faith. It is grace through faith in Christ alone that we're saved. No other way. Um, before I give you this article, I want you to know, and I talked about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, that's why the Bible says, come as you are. Because the Holy Spirit, once you accept Christ as Savior, the Holy Spirit will lead you to righteousness. And will lead you in the right direction. And will lead you out of whatever sinful lifestyle you're in. He will. That's his job. That's what he does. And I said it before and I will say it again. Not enough emphasis is put on the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will change your life to the point where you won't want to do what you used to do. And when you do, you're still forgiven. But you'll feel terrible. That's how the Holy Spirit operates. And not enough people put enough emphasis on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells in the believer. There is not a separate uh, thing you have to do. You just have to accept Christ as Savior. And once you do that, you are sealed until the day of redemption. Now, this article I'm coming on here giving you is very disturbing. I'm a music person. I used to be a singer. But what I'm, what I'm looking at here... Is disturbing because this is a perfect example in the music industry, the Christian music industry, of how they've accepted was evil. They've accepted was evil for good. They've accepted was evil for good. And it goes on. Now, I'm going to give you this uh, article, and this is uh, off a of Christ uh, church leader. Now the end begins, or end times headlines got this off of this article here. LGBTQ artist has the top Christian album on iTunes. This is a perfect example to show you that the churches are not teaching the gospel of grace, the true gospel. And this is a perfect example of people, Christians, Accepting what is evil to be good. Openly queer artists similar, the stage name of Grace uh, Baldrich, claim the number one spot on iTunes Christian album chart for two days and counting this week. Baldrige's new newly released uh, Preacher's Kid knocked Laura Daigle's Look Up Child from the top of the chart, where it had steady, where it held steady for much of the past two years. Now listen, and Laura Daigle's not much either. A Christian music executive told me to my face, and this is her speaking, the, uh, the, gay, per the gay artist, this is her speaking. She said, a Christian music executive told me to my face that there is no space for a story like mine in the industry. And I want to prove them wrong, she said shortly before the album moved to number one spot on the Christian chart. The artist said she wanted to claim the spot for anyone who has ever been cast out in the name of Jesus. Now, let me explain something to you. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to explain something to you. There's no such thing as a gay Christian. There never was or never will be. When God made man, he made Adam and Eve. He did not make Adam and Steve. I want to get that perfectly straight. People have accepted in the Christian community. I'm seeing this more and more with these articles coming up. They are accepting a lifestyle that the Bible is totally against. Now, I'm going to say this again. The Bible says, come as you are. It does. 
I know gay people who've accepted Christ and they turned around because they knew they were wrong. There is no such thing as a gay Christian under no circumstances. The Bible is against it, and that's, that's the bottom line. You can argue with me until you turn purple. I'm not going to change my stance because the Bible's, because the Word of God says there's no such thing. That's an oxymoron. There's not. Period. She made a song called The Preacher's Kid, which has, um, no, she didn't shook up the Christian music scene. And any Christian music artist who accepts this, I would question their salvation as well. I'm sorry, but this is, this is unbelievable. She made a song called The Preacher's Kid, which has a parental advisory for explicit lyrics. Had dropped to second place, but now is back at the number one spot on iTunes Christian album chart as of this writing. And it says, note, links to the album and its lyrics contain content some may find offensive. The album also currently holds the ninth spot in all albums on iTunes and was the fifth ranked album on the chart at one point. Baldrich wrote Preacher's Kid during a quarantine and released it on February 5th. It has risen to the top of iTunes chart in a few days with no play and no assistance from a label because Baldrich has achieved this success simply with the help of her followers. Excuse me, some have referred to the phenomenon as game stopping Christian music. Game stopping Christian music. This is what's going on right now. And I'm seeing it more and more. Sorry about that. The church has accepted, the Christian music industry has accepted what is evil. They've accepted it. Good is evil and evil is good. And I know a lot of you are like, well, what does this have to do with end times or the news? This is news and this is end times. It has everything to do with it. Because this is where this is where it's leading. Deception has overfilled this earth, but the great deception is coming after the rapture. But it's already starting, it looks like. To say, are we in the tribulation period? Absolutely not. We're not in the in the great tribulation period yet because we're still here. But the deception part of it is part is part of it is here. And this is one of them. Baldrige has called the song Preacher's Kid a project about coming out as a queer person of faith. There is no such thing as a queer person of faith. But it could just as easily be described as raw glimpse into her struggles with doubt, as well as a critique of Christian culture. Bethlehem, a song, I guess a song called Bethlehem, the first track on Preacher's Kid, plainly expresses the pain that comes with doubting one's faith and describes the brokenness of the brokenness the artist sees in Christianity. The artist wonders if she believes in Christianity just because she was raised to and says a savior who can't take her questioning is small. She also voices her pain as Christians who reject her. Jesus from Texas. That's an, I guess that's another song on her uh, thing. A nod to cultural Christianity touches on similar themes. This song, as well as uh, others, also express the artist's sadness at the rejection of others. I'll say it again. There's no such thing as a gay Christian. I'm sorry, but there's not. Now, the sad thing 
to this is that not only are her lyrics raw, but she also uses the word raw to describe the sound of the album. She says, I recorded everything at home and on my USB mic on my laptop. She told religious religion news services. Now it's a little embarrassing because I didn't think this many people would hear it. That's unfortunate that that many people heard it. Baldrige, who describes herself as faithfully skeptical Christian, but yet the news, the iTunes are still playing her tune as a Christian song, told RNS that while she hesitated at first to designate her album as Christian album, this is truly what it is. That's why I tell people, do not, if you witness to somebody, do not ask them, are you a Christian? Because the word Christian is loose, is a loose term. If you witness to somebody, ask them, how do you feel about Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed at the cross of Calvary? Do you believe that you are saved and sealed until the day of redemption? Do you believe in you? Do you believe in salvation? You talk to them like that, they'll either walk away from you or they won't answer. Or they'll give you, yeah, I do believe that. Simple as that. I can't believe, I mean, I can't, I can't believe this. Derek Webb, who was a former lead singer of the group uh, Cam, uh, Catman's Call, who has since uh, deconstructed from Christianity, praised her album. John Steingart also praised her album, saying it couldn't be more inspiring. Steingart is the former lead singer of Hawk Nelson. I used to listen to Hawk Nelson, who made waves last year when he announced he no longer believes in God. All these people who are praising this album, Half of them aren't saved, probably. I'm guessing that they're not. They were, they were never saved in the first place if they expressed that. Sorry, but that's what the Bible says. I'm going by what the Word of God says. DC Talk member Kevin Max praised the album as well, saying it's high time Christian music got a shake up with a message of reality and hope beyond the homo homo homogenized Christian contemporary music industry. People have walked away from the word of God, especially in the Christian music realm. And this article proves it. They are accepting... Is good is evil, and evil is good. And that's the bottom line. That's why I wanted to give you this, because this has a lot to do with the end times, and this has a lot to do with what is coming to the forefront. It has a lot to do with it. Now, the Bible says, and a lot of you are going to get mad at this. You know, I, I really don't care. <laughs> I, I personally, I don't. I really don't. Because that's what the Word of God says. If you've got a problem with it, read it. I'm going to read it for you right now. Um, and if you hear something in the background, my husband has a TV on, and that's a cat on the TV. <laughs> it says in... And I'm going to read I'm going to start with Romans 1. I'm going to start with verse 29. Let me go up a little bit. I'm going to start with verse 28. This is Romans 1. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do things which are not convenient. 
being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, mal, um, ma malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, unplaceable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, they that which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in those, have pleasure in them that do them. You can go back and read it for yourself. That's what it says. When you're saved, when you accept Christ, and I'm going to put this out there, and I know I'm going to get some people coming at me saying all kinds of stuff, but you will be blocked. When you accept Christ as Savior, when you believe in your heart, for with the heart man believes, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. When you believe in your heart that Christ is who he said he is and that he has come to take care of your past, present, and future sins and you are no longer in the world, you are of the world. You are with Christ. I'm going to say it again. The Holy Spirit will take over and dwell in you the moment you're saved. I don't know why this is so hard for people to realize. But the Holy Spirit will take over. Will you sin? Absolutely. Because we're in this fleshly body. But you will know about it by the Holy Spirit. Because at that point, when the Holy Spirit indwells in you, he changes you. Sometimes it's a gradual change and sometimes it's an instant change. But you will no longer want to do what you used to do. And like I said, listen very carefully. Sometimes it's an instant change and sometimes it takes time. It's a gradual change. But the Holy Spirit living in you and indwelling in you, you will not want to do what you used to do. And I'm living proof of that. I am living proof of that. Even the thought of sin repulses me. But unfortunately, I have sins of omission and sins of commission because I live in the fleshly body and so do you. So do you. That, the music industry, the Christian music industry, pisses me off. I'm just going to come out and say it. Because they've accepted what is evil for good. This is appalling. And I'm just going to come out and say it. People don't want to hear this because they don't hear it enough. I'm going to link the article in the description box. And by all means, go look at it. If you have any questions, you can email me. I'm going to put this video also on Rumble. You can email me and you can write me. In the meantime, I thank you, everybody, for your support. Um, I appreciate it. I really do. I Like I said, and I still do, I pray for you guys every day. I really do. And I pray that you get blessed. I will be back later if something else comes up. Thank you.